So here's the problem I need to solve. I have a hunting blind and a feeder out in the middle of the woods. There's no electricity anywhere nearby. And I've tried a lot of different game cameras, but the ranch is 150 miles away from my home. And so usually when I go out there and check a game camera, it tells me what the hogs were doing last week. And by that time, it's already too late. So what I need to do is set up my blind with a completely off-grid electrical system and be able to stream Wi-Fi out into the forest, out into the clearing, and then set up webcams around there to monitor what the hogs are doing. And the blind is where all the magic happens. That's where the big solar panels are, the satellite dish and everything. <laughs> show you a little bit about the solar panels and the power system today. In part two, we're going to be covering the satellite dish that this gentleman is installing right here. Today we're going to be talking about the sun that's going to come in through this area and beam down on the solar panels and we're going to talk about the solar electric system and the batteries and sizing and all that kind of stuff. But the ultimate goal is to transmit all this video back into the internet. But the first thing you've got to do is calculate the, your total power requirements, how many hours during the day you're going to be using that, how many overcast days to supply that power for, and then how big the panels need to be and how many batteries you need to have. If you look up there, you can see my first experiment with the Wi-Fi that's got the two little antennas on it there in the center and then a solar panel off to the right hanging down below the blind and that little solar panel that you see hanging down there is just not nearly large enough to handle the satellite modem which draws somewhere around 30 to 35 watts instead of the five or so that I thought it was going to draw. So in this calculator at wholesalesolar.com, you can put in the total wattage of all the equipment you need to power, and it'll tell you how many kilowatt hours you're going to need to be able to generate. And then based on the zone that you're in, how many hours of sunlight per day you can expect, it will tell you the size of the solar panels that you need. In my case, it's a little bit over 400 watts of solar. So here's how the solar panel is going to be mounted. We've got this bracket here. It's attached there with an adjustable slide here. And then we've got this zinc-plated rod uh, that you can get at Home Depot attached here. And then we're going to put a hinge like that. And this part of the hinge here will be mounted on the sidewall of the blind. And then we'll have it bolted to there. And that way the panel can be moved out to about a 45 degree angle. And then we'll have another one of these zinc rods attached here and angled down at a 45 degree angle like that to hold it away from the side of the blind. The sun's just clearing the top of the tree there now. It is uh, 11 o'clock. We've still got shade on the blind but that's going to change in a few minutes as the sun clears that tree. So the two hinges are up there now to support the solar panel on that side. And then we'll be putting two more over here. It's 1230 now and we've got pretty good sunlight. It, uh, there's a little bit of shading on the far right side there. It may be a bit of a problem. The rest of the panel is 
pretty well in the clear. Once that gets angled up 45 degrees, it may still be a little bit of shade that I need to cut from there. So here are the two panels still hanging straight down. I'll be putting uh, the straps along the bottom that allows those things to be angled out. And we can still drop them straight down whenever we get up in the blind and start shooting and we don't want our cartridges falling on the solar panels. I decided to go with 12 volt solar panels and connect them all in parallel. Uh, I've got three 145 watt solar panels, so a little bit less than 450 watts of total power. The third one is located away from the other two out in a location where it can start picking up earlier morning sun and be able to start energizing the batteries before the other two are able to. They'll still be in the shade. Shade is a huge problem for solar panels, especially if you've got them connected in series. If they're in series, they're like Christmas tree lights. When one of them is even partially shaded, it shuts down the entire collection of arrays. So I'm putting them all in parallel and should get somewhere between 12 volts and 18 to 20 volts at maximum solar radiation. So using the MC4 connectors that are supplied with solar systems, you can parallel all these panels together and then you feed them into a solar controller. And the purpose of the solar controller is to match the higher solar voltage from the panels with the battery voltage, which is 12 volts through a circuit breaker set and then into a now high-tech device that is even connected up over the internet so that you can monitor it and control it. And this particular one is a TriStar MPPT. It's rated at 60 amps and it'll handle up to 150 volts on the solar panels. And all of this can be monitored over the internet on a regular browser. It'll show you the battery voltage and current, the panel array voltage and current. And then it does a magical thing called maximum power point, MPPT, where it will assess the amount of current that the solar panels can generate at their voltage and then convert that down to what the battery can handle. So we go from 2.1 amps coming in from the solar panels to a 3.6 amps that it's actually using to charge the batteries. And while this looks like magic, it's really just a conversion of the 42 watts input to 42 watts output. But that extra 30 to 60% of power boost versus some of the cheaper controllers can make all the difference between being able to charge the batteries adequately or not. The other thing that's at the center of this system is the relay. And I'm using a digital loggers DIN 3 relay to control all the loads, the inverter, the floodlight, the blind camera, and the 12 volt distribution panel. And you can switch these on or off over the internet, but you can also set up a script so that every day at 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 4 p.m., 8 p.m., that relay box will make sure that the inverter gets switched on no matter what else is happening so that I can come online with the browser and check everything out over the internet. So the three solar panels, the TriStar solar controller, the circuit breakers, the batteries, all the cables, the internet relay and everything adds up to over $2,000. Now then, that doesn't even discuss what's out in the clearing, which is a solar-fed battery, again, with the ability to switch back and forth on a timer between nighttime infrared cameras and daytime pan-tilt-zoom camera. And all of this video streaming and internet access will be the subject of part two in this series.